A restavek, or restavek is a child in Haiti who is sent by his or her parents to work for a host household as a domestic servant because the parents lack the resources required to support the child. The term comes from the French language restauravec, to stay with. Parents unable to care for children may send them to live with wealthier or less poor families, often their own relatives or friends. Often the children are from rural areas and relatives who host restaveks live in more urban ones. The expectation is that the children will receive food and housing and sometimes an education in exchange for doing housework. However, many restaveks live in poverty, may not receive proper education, and are at grave risk for physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. The restavec system is tolerated in Haitian culture, but not considered to be preferable. The practice meets formal international definitions of modern-day slavery and child trafficking, and affects an estimated 300,000 Haitian children. The number of CDW child domestic workers in Haiti, defined as one living away from parents' home two not following normal progression in education three working more than other children, is more than 400,000. 25% of Haitian children age 5 to 17 live away from their biological parents. History Slavery has existed in Haiti since Columbus first landed on the island in 1492. Haiti proclaimed independence in 1804. France applied several rigid fines and prevented Haiti from accessing international resources, putting a heavy burden on Haiti's economy that detracted from social spending for many years. The Restavec tradition dates back centuries. Following the 2010 earthquake, thousands of individuals in Haiti were displaced from their homes and families. According to anecdotal evidence many of these individuals were children who would have nowhere to turn but to fall into the Haitian Restavec population. Along with displacement due to the occurrences of natural disasters, children are also highly recruited into becoming Restavecs by recruiters looking to find domestic servants for families. Many street children are former domestic servants who were dismissed by or ran away from the families they worked for. However, these children have not yet escaped the rest of life, instead, they are shifting into a different dimension of it that includes their exploitation in begging rings and prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> Conditions Many parents send their children to be rest of X expecting them to have a better life. Poor rural parents who cannot provide their children with clean water, food, and education send them away, usually to cities, to find these opportunities as restaveks. Restaveks are unpaid and have no power or recourse within the family. Unlike slaves in the traditional sense, restaveks are not bought or sold or owned, could run away or return to their families, and are typically released from servitude when they become adults. However, the restavec system is commonly understood to be a form of slavery. Often host families dismiss their restaveks before they turn 15, since by law that is the age they would begin having to be paid, many then live on the street. Increasingly, paid middlemen act as recruiters to place children with host families, and it is becoming more common to place children with strangers. Children often have no way to get back in touch with their families. A 2009 study by the Pan American Development Foundation found that Leading indicators of restavec treatment include work expectations equivalent to adult servants and long hours that surpass the cultural norm for children's work at home. A contradicting 2002 survey found that restavecs were allowed to sleep as long as or longer than the household children, received fewer beatings, 60% or more attended school, and many had their own bed or mat. Some restavecs do receive proper nutrition and education, but they are in the minority. According to the Pan American Development Foundation, education is also an important indicator in detecting child domesticity. Children in domesticity may or may not attend school, but when they do attend, it is generally an inferior school compared to other children, and their rates of non-enrollment are higher than non-restavec children in the home. Statistics. <laughs> <laughs> The estimates for numbers of Restavex in Haiti range from 100,000 to 500,000. A 2002 door to door survey found the number of Restavex under age 17 in Haiti to be 173,000, 59% of them girls. As poverty and political turmoil increase, the reported number of Restavex continues to rise dramatically. 
In 2009, the Pan American Development Foundation published the findings of an extensive door-to-door -door survey conducted in several cities in Haiti, focused on Restivex. The findings document thousands of Restivex living in Haiti. The report also found that 11% of households who have Restivex working for them also send their own children to work as Restivex for someone else. In 2010, it is believed that the earthquake has caused many more children to become Restivex, as children who were orphaned by the quake could potentially be turned over by distant relatives who cannot care for them. Topic: <laughs> Contributing factors. Two major factors that perpetuate the Restivex system are widespread poverty and a societal acceptance of the practice. Parents who cannot provide for their children continue to send them to be Restivex. Haiti, a nation of 10 million people, is the most poverty-stricken in the Western Hemisphere. Guerta Lexima Constant, a child rights advocate with the Haitian Limi Levy Foundation, says, I have yet to meet anyone who wanted to send their kid to be a Restivex. Parents are forced to because of a lot of national and international givens. The economic means they used to have, they don't anymore. The invasion of foreign rice, eggs, and other things on the market by big business, destroying the peasant economy. There's been a whole chain of events that makes some people have to send their child away. The practice of Restivec is widely accepted in Haitian culture, although the upper classes have increasingly begun to look down on it. The connotation of the word restivec is understood to be negative, implying servility. Individual factors that increase a child's likelihood of becoming a restivec include lack of access to clean water, lack of educational opportunities, access to family in a city, and illness or loss of one or both parents. Haiti has too few orphanages for its abundance of orphans, putting them at high risk of becoming restivecs. Preventative and restorative efforts Efforts exist to address the root cause of child servitude. Improving the economy, especially through government support for the rural population, would undermine parents' incentive to give children up, as would an improved health care and education system. Parents would not be as easily pressured by recruiters to hand their children over to become Restivex if they were provided with aid such as food, clothing, and clean water. In May 2009, over 500 Haitian leaders gathered in Port au Prince, Haiti to discuss the Restivex condition and how to make positive changes to this complex problem. Leaders from all facets of society attended the full-day session and conference organizers from the Jean Cadet Restivec Foundation and Fondation Maurice Sixto hope that this dialogue is the start of a large grassroots movement to, at a minimum, stop the abuse of Restivec children. The Restivec Freedom Foundation hosted 13 additional conferences titled, Compassion and Courage, across Haiti. These conferences were hosted from the spring 2012 through the spring of 2013 and asked community leaders and pastors to take a stand on the issue of Restivec. Over 3,000 leaders participated in these conferences and have agreed to take the lead in their respective communities to bring an end to the Restivec situation. Other organizations in Haiti, such as Restivec Freedom Alliance, BEM Inc. are also actively working in southwestern Haiti with Restivec children. Organizations such as the Center for Action and Development CAD, and La Scale in Port-au-Prince exist to house, feed, and give medical and psychological care to escaped Restivex while looking to send them back to their families. Topic in popular culture Jean Robert Cadet vividly recounted his life as a Restivex. According to him, a term for children staying with host families who do not abuse them is Timon Ki Reet K Maun, Creole for child who stays in a person's house, law and order, chattel, episode 19.8, original air date January 7, 2009, depicts the discovery, investigation, and disposition of a ring of white Americans who adopt Haitian children and employ them as Restivex. Cross Current by Christine Kling is a mystery novel set in South Florida that depicts the conditions of Restivex. The philanthropist episode Haiti, a girl Restivec is a main part of the story. Boston Legal, in the episode, Fat Burner, Season 3, Episode 15, attorney Clarence Bell gives representation to a girl Restivec who, after being impregnated by her master, stabbed the man to death after he had informed her that he intended to sell her child. 